Oh, we have different teams now. Never mind. I should probably stop talking about those players. They're no longer really relevant. So we have Kigs, Big D Mills, and Winter Knights now against Freezy Session Baddie. I mean, having kind of gone, I guess, two out of three, seems like we're having a bit of cycling going on here. So, I want to know who these players play. I'm going to find out. So Kigs appears to be a Shifu main, and indeed is going for their Shifu. Winter Knights with Paloma, which is... Let's see. Winter Knights who mains Paloma as well, so that's definitely who they would be playing. And Big D Mills and the Iva. Yeah, so all the players on this new red team are definitely playing their mains. I want to see how this works, because the last time we were seeing the red team just play a lot of experimental heroes, it's good to learn other heroes. So, I don't figure them that at all. But I'm curious to see how it'll work with people playing their mains. Because people playing their mains are going to be playing as best as they can, especially at this level. There's a lot of little things to throw out there, a lot of little mind games that you have to remember about, and a lot of applications of abilities that are not always obvious at first. So, we should be seeing... Well, probably Kig's just holding on. And Kig's will be doing a lot of pressure, of course, being Shifu. Although, I'm assuming they are. Because they're playing Shifu. That's just an assumption. And getting pulled in already, kind of like, being forced in against their will. And a proper Kunju coming in there. That Kunju will be... Actually, well, actually pulling Kig's quite a ways out of position. But their team following. And the center is open up. And it looks like Vreezy's going into the center. Actually, both Vreezy and Sesh going into the center to take the orb. And they do. But Vreezy's completely getting wrecked between a flamethrower... And all the slicing coming in from Kiggs. Vreezy forced out of there, and wow, Big D Mills completely holding on to Vreezy, not letting Vreezy get away with anything. That was a well timed snipe, but it does still lead to Vreezy's death. Did stop the machine gun, though, so at least that that was done. Whirlwind with Batty gets away from. Bit of a waste of a whirlwind. Doesn't manage to deal with as much damage as it needs to, and Kiggs, while holding on decently well, not able to do much, but Winter Knights with the Ancestral Spirit. And that's going to basically finish, well, not totally finish off, but almost finish off. And now Batty getting, that's done. Was... That's, that turned around a bit quicker than I thought it would. I mean, especially when Sesh just pulled in, like that pull right at the very start. It's getting Kigs out of position, but the team following them. I mean, a lot of it was just Freezy, a lot of it was Freezy getting completely wrecked. Like, Freezy lost 150 health in no time at all. Now, Shifu can combo for, especially if, especially now that Kunju charges, can combo for like 100 damage. So, that can happen easily. Especially when you have your team there, when you have an Iva there, flamethrower ring, and it's just very difficult. But, I'm expecting Blue Team to be a bit more defensive, and Sesh, really in the center, forcing people back, and Kunju not triggered, which is perfect, because if they got triggered, that would have been, that would have been extremely problematic. But Kicks now once again out of position, and Vreezy being much more attentive to getting out of there when the Impales are coming. But now the proper Kunju and all the damage being dealt in Attendance Wing, forcing Vreezy and Batty out of position while the red team takes the orb. And Big D Mills getting, well, trying to help here, but Smoke Veil, perfect from Vreezy. Vreezy has been on point with those Smoke Veils in the last match, and they're once again on point now. But we have the, we have once again Kicks going in trying to be sticky. And it's difficult to stick sticky onto a Jade, but Vreezy has got very little left. Well, okay, I think the cooldowns are a little bit wonky, but they do have Blast Fall on cooldown, so it's going to be a lot easier to hold on at this point. But at the same time, Winner's about to die does manage to does manage to scare away Vreezy, but not good enough. And at this point, Blue Team entirely covered in Crippling Goo, but that's fine. That's their Crippling Goo. And now Kig's... Not even being focused. Oh, actually, being pulled in with a Kunju, but to no real avail. Pretty much just pulled out of position that way. I mean, that's the one tricky thing about Kunju. It's both Kunju and Wuju. Varesh's counter. Both of them are really tricky that way. If you're not careful with them, you're going to end up throwing them out there, and then your opponent can just manipulate you. Especially if they can pull, they can pull you in a position where their team can just three-on-one you or two-on-one you, and you're done. Well, not totally. Of course, Shifu can get out of there using Fleetfoot. For Varesh, it's a bit harder, because Varesh basically just has... Well, I mean, even... They do have options. They're metered options, though. That's the thing. 
All of Rush can really do reliably is inhibitors, inhibitors guard to at least protect them a bit from damage. They don't really they don't have a meterless escape option. So it really it does pull them in and it does get them out of position. Now we have once again oh sh well Sesh being pulled into with Javelin coming in right away to get to Sesh and Kunji getting triggered as well. Giving Kigs a lot of opportunity to deal damage, but not a whole lot of opportunity to actually get... Well, I would say get meaningful damage, but at this point, Batty's getting a lot of damage on them. Good Rock is coming in as well, pushing Batty way out of position, and Batty's about to get Flamethrower down. Smoke Veil, Clutch Smoke Veil coming in from Freezy, saving Batty from certain doom. But the Whirlwind as well on... Well, Whirlwind completely countered by that disabling shot, but once again, the Kunju being triggered is bad news. But... Nice! Nice 180 snipe there to stop Big D Mills and just about kill them. Big D Mills will not be able to stay in combat easily and being focused down, not quite finished off. There, there's a lot of effort to go for Big D Mills to finish them off, which is the right move because Big D Mills is almost dead, but Big D Mills managed to escape. And now the whirlwind coming in, partly stopped by Crippling Goo, but still a Freezy and Batty with so much pressure. And Batty finally going down to an Impale and another Kunju coming in, but with the Blast Vault getting out of the way, doesn't quite do enough. The Impale manages to finish off Freezy. And at this point, Big D Mills just going for the flamethrower, oil flamethrower. But really, it's a 3v1. That's the important part, and that goes the way most 3v1s go. I say Big D Mills escaped there right at the last, right about minute into the round. Right as they were dying. Paid off in spades. Though granted, so did that smoke fail. That early clutch smoke fail was the only reason Batty survived as long as they did. I mean, that was just over the wall smoke fail. Awesome to see. Very awesome to see. Because honestly, Smoke Veil is an underrated ability of Jade's. You don't see it used a whole lot, especially... I don't even know when you start really seeing it used a whole lot. Probably grade 12 or 13. Where people know, oh hey, that's a thing I can do. Anyway, a bit of poking coming in here. And, oh, Big D Mills, are they trying to engage? They are. Well, they are now. They're forced to engage, but the other side forced them out of there. And another Kunju, but once again, escaping out of there. And not a whole lot of damage dealt meaningfully for Kiggs. It, blue team is really adapting to Kiggs. Well, I would say that, except for the Kunju getting triggered right again. But once again, the Impale not really doing much. Getting a bit of damage in there, but honestly, those Kunjus have been intentionally triggered so often just to get the 3v1 situation. I don't even think it's a matter of... That, that does not look like a mistake. That's like the second time the 3v1 has just come in there. That match alone, it seemed to happen twice. Like, both Kunjus were pretty much triggered into 3v1. Well, the first one, not so much. The first one got blast vaulted out of, but the second one was just... That was just there as a setup. Basically, using it against them. That's the best way to do it. And at this point, Paloma trying... Well, actually doing quite a lot to, to stop things, but not quite able to get Sesh into that ultimate, into the Ancestral Spirit. And with... Well, once again, coming in, trying to... Trying to Spirit Guide into Spirit Rift. Kind of surprised they're not soul draining though. At least get some damage off there and down with the ultimate goes Big D Mills. And why don't I, I really don't know why they aren't using spear, the soul drain. Like EX Spirit Rift. Because that damages. It heals you, damages them for 15 each. That's... I mean... If you're trying to use Ancestral Spirit, I guess. It's just Ancestral Spirit against this team. Pretty much any one of them alone can do loads to avoid it. And if Vreezy has meter and they have stealth off cooldown, that's smoke veil right there. So there's not a whole lot that can be said for that. It's like Ancestral Spirit's not gonna do much. Spirit or Soul Drain, on the other hand, that has a lot more potential, I think. Now, now Patty, get get out of the front there. Do not do not engage directly. That's not what you want to do. And Kig's being forced off their mount, but not really to any real avail. And there's the grab, and trying to pull in Winter Knight, but Winter Knight, other side's out of the way. And no Kunju to try to, well, no triggering of the Kunju, no intentional setups. Although at this point, Blue Team's still confident enough, and still, come on, show me Shifu. There's Shifu. Shifu forced the other side out of there, but at this point, it's just getting, it's the 3v1's going all in the favor of Blue Team every single time. It's all 3v1's in favor of Blue Team, and that has been winning them these matches. Another smoke fail, and snipe, nice snipe into Reaping Scythe. And with the last few deadly injects, I mean, this attempts to charge up, but it's really... Okay, well, the machine gun trying to do the damage it can, but a snipe already in place to deal with that. And with the count, with the Kunju off cooldown, the ultimate here... Four... Well, the Wraith here, that's just... 
able to do all the damage it wants to do. Nothing was really there to stop it. Nothing was there to stop to stop Kicks from taking the damage that they were pretty much inevitably going to take now. And nice dodge from the Impale. But now Machine Gun on and another Snipe. But that Snipe forcing Freezy into a position where they have to use the Blast Ball to get out of there. But it doesn't even matter. Getting the last few shots in to get rid of Big D Mills. And now they're still in a good position. Perfect last minute counter coming in from Kiggs. I don't know if it'll be enough. It looks like they didn't manage to hit the Impale. So that's no good for them. And now Winter Knight way out of position. Actually, a bit more of a 1v1 at this point. It's but not enough. Good try rooting Freezy and Batty to get them out of the way, but they are ranged. They don't really care as much about being rooted. Are we so, a bit of a bad end for the red team there. But yeah, they're not really focusing. I'm noticing the red team is not really doing a whole lot to really stay on top of any one hero. They're doing a lot to deal damage, but not doing a whole lot to actually kill. And then the damage is being healed up. Good Lucy. And once again, Shifu being kunjued in there, or Kig's being kunjued in there. And once again, it's a setup. Once again, forced to get other sided out of there just to avoid dying. Now the blue team does not have center control, but it almost doesn't matter. Although, actually, it will matter a little bit. Winter Knights does manage to get the center orb, but at this point, Big D Mills is getting so much focus down on them, and that's not going to be much good. So, blue team with all the health, and Kig's being basically, well... Being focused down once again, forced to use all their tools to get out of there, forced... Not quite forcing Winter Knights to use their tools, but it doesn't matter. For, Winter Knights should have used their tools, at least it would have allowed them to survive better. Winter Knights... Well, they have other side off cooldown from the looks of it. And that was, now well, Spirit Gun to Spirit Rift. Once again, the one for that combo, that classic combo that's not really helping out. I mean, it makes sense, you know, rush in is aggressive Spirit Rift. And pull, wow, forced out of their own Ancestral Spirit, not even getting the healing for that. And that Snipe finishing, well, as expected. But still, that was, that sucks. Getting junk shotted out of there is, like, the one thing you want Ancestral Spirit for, if nothing else, if no damage is dealt, is at least for your own healing. But not even that was given to her. I mean, that was just a lot of meter down the drain. And I still think Aggressive Soul Drain would be the way to go for Winter Knight. If they're going to go for that Aggressive Spirit Rift, at least get the guaranteed health, because Soul Dr Soul Drain will always get the health. Spirit Rift might not give panic. If your opponents are paying attention and they know you're doing that, that just gets predictable. They're not going to attack. And once again, actually no, I should say once again for the Javelin. Javelin coming in and Kunju not being triggered. Good timing to avoid triggering it, but at this point, I think it's been pretty well established that Blue Team wants to trigger Kunju in order to avoid the damage being dealt. Or sorry, in order to get, well, kind of avoid the damage being dealt because they want to just get that out of the way. Want to avoid the team fight. Want to get the 3v1. And indeed, they have gotten it once again, but Kig's getting out of there. But Kig's, are they going to go for it? Getting Kunju. Kunju is triggered, but it looks... Well, Winter Knight's going after them, and that's forcing Blue Team out of there. And actually, a lot of damage dealt to Batty. The Tenant Swing putting Batty in a terrible position. The smoke fail to at least maybe salvage some things. But the Taser stopping Breezy from actually dealing the damage they'd like to. Good disabling shot, but unfortunately, it's not really enough. Red team with a solid control of the center, solid HP, and nothing to show for it for the blue team. I think the orb is just going to go to... I don't even know if it's going to matter. The orb is almost not going to matter at this point. Proper snipe, getting at least stopping the whirlwind from doing much. But the attempt at the 3v1, completely stuffed with that tendon swing. Freezy down, Batty down, and Sesh soon to follow. Sesh at least trying to get out of the way. All they can really do is get out of the way as best as possible. They at least, like, oh, Shadow Beast, this is what the ultimate skull, whatever. They're ulting out of there, trying to at least. Almost their best bet is just to get to the center, take the orb, and get the health. But even that's not going to be enough. And Red Team manages to get themselves back on the board. Three to four. They win two more, and they seem to have figured out the Kunju bait. It's definitely working. Oh, yeah. Winter Knight's got soul theft. I mean, Winter Knights is using other, other side a lot. And that Soul Theft Battle Right just got put back on there this patch, which I'm glad to see. I like that Battle Right. I thought it was really in keeping. And it also encourages more soul, more other side. Which is like which is such a great move for Paloma. That and the healing that was added to other side too. Other side got a nice set of buffs. But anyway, bit bit more of a traditional combat setup going on for the blue team. They don't want to go for the Kunju baits anymore. However, they are still managing to get some really nice focus on Kigs. Kigs already at half health, and blue team taking no damage to show for it. Some rockets coming in to try to hopefully deal some damage. 
but not really enough meaningful damage is going to be dealt. That was a bit of a waste. And another Kunju trigger. Pretty much looked like an intentional Kunju trigger. The Impale does go off, does deal the damage, but it's not enough. And Kiggs forced to be other sided every little bit of escape to get Kiggs out of there. But Blue Team taking the orb as most of Red Team is distracted, trying to save Kiggs from their own. Tr well, not so much stupidity, but their own loss of the mind games. And once again, the Kunju is triggered. I'm seeing Kiggs needing to use some canceling on those Kunjus. And now down they go. Vreezy in a bad shape, but honestly, at this point, Blue Team is in such good shape overall that it doesn't even matter with the orb going to the Blue Team once again. And, well, Smoke Fail was a little bit of a waste. I mean, it was a, it was a safety Smoke Fail. Didn't manage to actually do a whole lot, but it was safety at least. Now at this point, Winter Knight's taking all the focus. Good combination. And the ultimate to finish, oh, try to finish off Big D Mills, but Big D Mills will still go down for a claw just being pulled into a bunch of M1s. So I gotta say, that was some really nice trickery around Shifu's counter. And I mean, it seemed like Red Team was starting to get wise to it, it's just they didn't seem to get as wise to it as they needed to be. They needed to be really attentive to the fact that Kunju was being used against them. Uh, if they had for I think if they had forced Blue Team into a more traditional team fight, and then and then at that point Kig started using the Kunju, that wouldn't have been so bad. But because Blue Team was generally out of position, just out of the middle, when Kig's used Kunju, Kig's got pulled totally out of position, forcing everyone else to try to save them, particularly Winter Beast, forcing them to try to save them with other sides and Spirit Rifts and well, Spirit Guiding in as well, just to do everything they could to at least make it a team fight, not a 3v1. Because... That's what it kept becoming thanks to that. Like, thanks to the fact that it was constantly Kunju into death. Like, Kunju into 3v1. That pretty much described how that game went. And once Kiggs was down, the rest of them pretty much soon followed. And that looks like pretty much the same setup for... Team. I'm curious if they're going to change anything going on with their team composition, the actual heroes they use. Because I don't think... I don't think it was a bad composition. I just don't think that they had the right idea as far as getting their ability usage going. Or be more, to be more precise... Vreezy in particular seems to just have Kig's number, how to deal with them, how to approach, how to force Kig's out of position. That was pretty much the story of the game. So if Kig's goes for Shifu once again, I'm expecting fewer Kunjus. Although we're still waiting on Big D Mills at this point, or presumably Big D Mills, I'm guessing they're going to be playing the same teams. So yeah, I just... I don't know. The one thing I could possibly see just looking at their... You know, the composition doesn't really change much. I mean, Winter Knights is quite the Paloma main. And Kiggs' is the only other option that they seem like they're probably reasonably confident with would be Baco. Or maybe Freya. Judging by their MBR page. So, if they go for Baco or Freya, I think that would work a lot better. Because, at least with Baco, it's... You know, there's some possibility to reflect things. And there's a lot more for... If you're out of position for self-sustain. I mean, there's stuff that Shifu can do, but a lot of what Shifu can do is get the hell out of there. Like, get in a few swipes, get get out of there, or Tendon Swing, get out of there. I mean, when Kiggs was actually really using Tendon Swings, that was beautiful. That was working out wonderfully. But it wasn't being used quite enough. That's the one thing. So, if we do see more Tendence Wings, we should see Red Team do a lot better. If we see Baco instead, I think Red Team will also have an easier time just because, well, it's a bit more of a counter character for everything, really. Blue Team's focused so much on ranged, on range damage. I mean, a lot of that, of course, is Bulwark. But also, once you get Bravery, or the Bravery Battle Right thrown onto Valiant Leap, then you end up getting the damage reduction, assuming you go for that. But it looks like Kiggs will probably continue to... Nope, Kiggs is going for Shifu. So... Like I said, it's a question of how much did they use Kunju, how much did they use Tendon Swing. Less of the first, more of the second. Probably the way to go, assuming that 
they use it the same way it's been used so far. But I'm curious. And also, we are on... Oh, yeah, we're on Mount Aras Day this time. I mean, Skyring Knight definitely doesn't quite have as much of a center. Really almost doesn't have a center because of all the outward-facing walls. But Mount Aras Day is a bit more middling. You do have a few walls you can play off of. You do have the fact that it's just you have center control when you have the center. The choke points are thinner. I don't know. I mean, blue team's strategy of staying outside of the center, probably not what they're going to go for. And already starting out. Nice. Bit of a nice chatable there just for extra damage. But at this point, Kiggs, want, Kiggs once again jumping into the fray and getting a fair bit of damage, but against a barrier, so ultimately not that much. And with that smoke fail, stop Kiggs from doing much and the snipe as well. Kiggs is way out of position, and while their team is there, they're just getting folks down so hard. I mean, Big, Big Demil's trying to do what they can to keep Batty out of the fight, but it's not helpful enough. And perfect time on the counter, but that Kunju was not quite what they needed. I mean, once again, just solo health. Proper. Oh, very nice other side. Get out of there. And get. Oh, pulling out of the Ancestral Spear for the kill, just for the extra damage, too, but to stop the healing on top of that, that was, once again, beautiful. And while the center orb is there, Big D Mills just needs to get shot a few times, and Big D Mills will soon go down. That was that. I'm still not convinced that these cooldowns are correct. I think if I'm hold looking at a hero while they use their abilities, the cooldowns don't actually refresh, which is a pain. That's the whole point I'm showing you in these heroes. Oh, I want to see the cooldowns, too. I want to be sure that they're working. Oh, no, never mind. They do work. All right, that was odd before I didn't see things like space on cooldown. Well, any of the, any of the escape moves on cooldown. So, at this point, blue team clearly wants the center. They're not going to be doing the same thing they do with Sky Ring Knight, because Sky Ring Knight is Sky Ring Knight, and it's a lot harder to control center. Mount Raz Day is very different that way. And another Shadow Ball coming in here. No extra damage. Really, the claw. That's where the match starts, is that claw. And the other side are trying to stop it. And another Kunju. Actually, this Kunju, not as much of a bait. Blue team having to make up for it more than anything. But Snipe coming in now that the Kunju's on cooldown. And that... Once again, that Shifu, I gotta, gotta keep an eye on there, because it's really a matter of when they're using... And they have Tendon Swing available. There's the Tendon Swing. And there's the Ancestral Spirit, which will actually not deal damage. It looks like Sesh managed to get out of there just in time. But those Impales are working out really nicely. Like, Kig, Kig seems to be getting the idea of when to do the Impales, but now Big D Mill's taking all the damage. And nice pull on the orb, taking it out of there. Seth getting it away. The blue team, once again, with the orb, crippling goot, not really doing all that much. I mean, Winter Knight has the least damage dealt to them, and... Okay, push out of the way. Get Kiggs out of there, otherwise there's no way to live. So Kiggs with that ultimate, and at this point, no one really with ultimate. Snapshot there responded with other side, so... Didn't manage to put Winter Knight in a position where it's easy to kill them, but... Oh, Kiggs getting thrown out of position, and that's it. Very nice clarity potion. Oh, they had the clarity potion right, don't they? No, they don't. They, they don't actually have that right. I thought they did. But still, Clarity Potion does get rid of him material, and that finishes off... Well, I've finished off Kiggs, and Big D Mills getting finished off. Well, she... Oh, at this point, Winter Knight just giving up. That was that. So, I mean... Yeah, Big D Mills took a lot of damage mid-round, which was not what they needed to have taken, but Kiggs... Man, they... Why is this... Hang on. Anyway, so last, last match, I felt like Red Team was starting to get an idea of what to do, but it has also been about 10 rounds at this point in total it played, so I don't really see that being something that should take this long. But once again, Red Team actually taking a bit of stronger center control, which we have seen how this works before. The Kunju comes out, and then the Kunju gets baited and then used as a way of pulling Kiggs out of position. So, Red Team appears to be waiting for the center at war, but Kiggs still on their mount. Doesn't want to do anything, and kind of paying for that. Actually, once again, being pulled out of position, but that Impale does work out, and Kiggs able to get back into a safe position. Though, ultimately, that paid off very beautifully. Kiggs actually way ahead, and Breezy forced to get away as best as... Okay, well, smoke veiling out of there, at least. But still, forced to do that, and Kiggs, now they're playing Shifu the way I expect Shifu to be played, with all the sh... All the tendon swings, all the impales. Freezy forced out of the center of the arena, and Kiggs, at this point, just... I mean, at least Blue Team got the orb, but still... I 
think Legion got the orb. But it doesn't even matter. Red team's so far ahead in health that the crippling goo trying to help, and at least Kig's being forced into there somewhat, but Freezy being down is bad place to be. The Ancestral Spirit, first hit, finishing off Sesh and Batty, trying to do what they can to survive. Not doing enough, I'm afraid. Not enough Petrified Bolts, I'm thinking. Batty was using them before to great effect, but I have hardly seen any in the last few games. Which is curious. I mean, that's a huge tool. I realize they've been nerfed, but... Actually, that might be why. They have been nerfed. Reactions are going to be a bit more effective against them. So I could totally see how that would be the case. But at this point, round four, and we do have red team on the board. Once again, blue team with center control. And, oh, nice Shadow Bolt. Oh, it doesn't go manage that. That claw would have been a big deal because the Shadow Bolt ultimately did nothing thanks to the healing. I mean, there we go. There's the pull. There's the attack. There's the engagement. Force on the other side. And now some permanent damage being dealt to Big D Mills. While at the same time, another 2v1 on Kiggs. And wise choice not triggering the Kunju. No reason to. Kiggs is already out of position. And Kiggs taking all the damage in the world. The snipe and all the revolver shots in there does manage to avoid the disabling shot. But honestly, that's not the biggest deal right now. And Winter Knight forcing themselves into position, which triggers the smoke fail, but ultimately does waste the Spirit Rift. And while they do heal up, still taking all the damage, still way out of position, and one good engagement from the blue team against Winter Knights, that will finish them off. Kiggs managed to heal up a little bit, but... Really, Kiggs going for more health. Trying to get themselves back into this. There's Petrified Bolt getting Winter Knights out of the fight for a little while, as I've been complaining about them, and now Petrified Bolt's up. So hey, there we go. That's what we needed. And oh, oh, there goes Kiggs once again. Their low health really put them in a bad position. I mean, it was a position that obviously don't want to be in. Never want to be in that position, but they just got focused now. It's really hard for Shifu to stay out of that position. Now, of course, with Winter Knight, it was more a matter of they got intentionally focused, got pulled in, and then wrecked apart. Big D Mills generally did a pretty good job just staying out of the fight, staying in a safe enough position, but I don't know if they contributed a lot. It, didn't, it felt like there was rockets thrown in there. That was good. Rockets and oil. I mean, that's what Iva kind of does in a team situation. Just throw out rockets and oil. Hit people in fire. Did not, didn't see a lot of tasering. Gotta keep an eye on that. I didn't. I did not notice a lot of tasering going down there. And there should be too, because clearly Big D Mills is focusing on their taser somewhat, right wise. Gotta keep an eye out for that. Seems like a thing that's likely to be used. I've seen them used a bit, just not. Oh, there we go. There's a good taser. That was a really good taser, actually. But yeah, this and once again, Kig's getting some nice damage, and they're Breezy forced out of position, and. Allowing, okay, Breezy and Batty back together. Sesh, not quite with their team, but at least they're dealing some damage. Winter Knight's getting focused down and needs to pull in. Looks like Spirit Guide. Well, the recast timing is done. Winter Knight's way out of position, taking all the damage. It's not what you want to have happen, especially in three, especially with all the healing potential that's there. Red Team did manage to take the orb, so at least they managed to get some healing from that. And, of course, the meter as well. And should we Kunju into Whirlwind? No. Well, maybe once... At this point? No, not even. Not going for the world. There's the whirlwind, but the junk shot stopping it from happening, and the disabling shot completely finishing it down. And while Red Team does get the orb again, it's still not enough. And now Kiggs is going to get Breezy, not in a great position, but the disabling shots and smoke fails. All the control coming in from Breezy is just perfect. And with Kiggs getting hit a few more times, oh, one, a couple more shots should do the trick. And now the whirlwind finishing it off. Breezy almost dead though, and that's what Wooden Knights wants to finish off. To take care of Breeze as much as they can. And Central Spirit not managing to do enough. Because, I mean, there was still an escape available. Blast Vault was not on cooldown. So, nice try focusing down Freezy. They were under a lot of threat, but not nearly enough, I'm afraid. So, what potentially could be the last round? And I'm not sure how much Red Team has adapted to it. They're, they seem to be getting... They seem to be getting there. Yeah, now finally Big D Mills avoiding those early Shadow Bolts and avo avoiding the Claws, forcing them to be on cooldown. Now, Spirit Guide Winter Knights, they're not going to go for it, I don't think. That seems to be more in case Sesh managed to jump in, or managed to pull. And at this point, Kig's going in for the attack, not managing to do a whole lot of damage, getting a bit of impaling, but just chip. Nothing meaningful. And another Snipe coming in. Actually, that Snipe would have been very worthless, thanks to the Zap. 
but it, I mean, ultimately a lot of misses coming out there. Freezy getting focused down. Freezy getting the bulk of the pressure. And at this point, Big D Mills getting more pressure as well. Big D Mills about to go down, but gets out of there, thankfully for them. Shields in time and does not take all the damage they could have. Machine gun not doing enough, unfortunately. And with that pull, Big D Mills is about to go... Actually, Big D Mills and Winter Knight both. Big D Mills under a huge amount of pressure. The damage has been spread around. If Reese goes down, there's actually a decent chance that red team could... No, never mind. No, now, now it's 2v3 and... Even if Freezy does go down, and Freezy's not likely to go down. Between the Panic Bolt, there we go. Perfect combo. Panic Bolt into Snipe. Wonderful combo to have. And that finishes it off. So, sheesh. Freezy's session daddy. Doing a great job. Just wrecking face here. So I think that's going to be it for me tonight. I hope you enjoyed watching that. I certainly did. My goodness, these players... Especially Freezy's Jade. I mean, the smoke veil usage, I don't think I ever saw stealth being used. Because it was all smoke veil. Which kind of makes sense. Immaterial's great. I mean, repositioning's also good, but I think that's more of a twos thing. It's useful in threes, but the thing is, is that your opponents, if they're distracted enough that a stealth isn't going to be a big deal, well, then you can just attack without worrying about stealth. I mean, the snipes were going off no problem. And if you're doing smoke veils, that keeps your heroes alive. It keeps your team alive. So I hope you enjoyed that, my first casting of threes, which is very difficult. Gotta say, a lot to follow, a lot of go stuff going on. I I can kind of see why it's, I mean, obviously I know why it's the preferred mode. I've played quite a bit about, I've played Bloodline Champions. Like, that was all threes. So it was definitely interesting. I, I'd like to cast more threes. I'd like to see that. It'd be cool if that came up with PRL. It is, of course, a mode that definitely requires a second caster to be as good as possible. But that's true in general. But yeah. Hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Thank you all for watching and have a good night.